Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy and today we are going to do this questions and answers video. So a few days ago, I think it was like four days ago actually, I uh, asked y'all to uh, drop me some questions and I wanted to just answer them. So this video might be kind of long. I'm kind of expecting that it'll be long. There's like 40 something questions that I pulled. I answered some of them in the actual community page. But yeah, so this for me is like the 10K video. Thank you all so much for supporting. I um, I don't know what to say. It's been crazy. It's been a crazy experience. I'm gonna keep working hard. I hope that y'all keep showing up. So there will be videos every day. There'll be streams almost every single day. And um, yeah, join the Discord and become a part of this awesome thing that we've got going on. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions because this might be a bit. All right, first question is from Moore, and he said, with all the new changes that have occurred due to the recent patch and taking into account the general opinion by the player base that Zapdos is OP, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? <laughs> so, nice roundabout way about asking me my favorite flavor of ice cream. Um, my favorite flavor of ice cream is either cookie dough ice cream or cookies two-step. And cookies two-step is like cookies and cream mixed with cookie dough ice cream. It's really, really good. All right, next question is from Thickwid. And he said, what do you think about hidden mechanics like Dreadnought giving a debuff to damage you do to Zapdos? Um, and as someone who isn't a dev but experienced player, how would you improve the approach Unite takes to teaching new players how to play the game? I don't like hidden mechanics. Uh, I don't mind that the mechanic is there, but I like transparency. I like knowing how to make strategies. I, I like knowing how to approach the game um, because we understand the game. So hidden strategies like that or like hidden little mechanics like that, not really cool. As far as how they could approach teaching new players the game... Um, I mean, they could always work on like better tutorials and stuff, but that that's only going to go so far. You know, a lot of the nuance with MOBAs comes from players like figuring out optimal play. So maybe they could respond to players figuring out optimal play and then add in tutorials for that. Like they could add in a tutorial about how important Dreadnought is. You know what I mean? Like they could, I, but, but even then they can't like definitively say like, oh, everybody should rotate to Dreadnought. So... I don't know, I think just like allowing players to like try out new characters, which they can do is a good thing, like having standard matches and quick matches, like I think that might, might be one thing that just has to come with time. Um, I don't think they do a ter particularly terrible job at teaching new players, but um, MOBAs are, they're kind of a lot, so I don't know, I think, I think it's okay. All right, Cody Stir asked, if the game developers made a new game mode, what game mode would you be most excited to see come to Pokemon Unite? Um, I don't really know because I don't really play any of the quick play matches at all. I'm not I'm just not really interested. I always tend to focus on the more serious side of whatever game I'm playing. So that said, if they were to make like another big serious map, I think it could be cool if they made like a more traditional three lane map that had a jungle. Um, you know, you'd have like, well, the normal kind of metas like solo top, solo mid, duo bot, and then like one jungler. That could be really, really cool. They could also have it be a game mode that actually is a little bit longer in time and it would be much more traditional MOBA. That said, I don't think they'll ever do that. Uh, the whole point of Pokemon Unite is to kind of be this like shorter, more accessible, like easier version of a MOBA. It's definitely like, um, got the the kind of like simple onboarding for new players and I, I think that that's what they're most likely going to stick to so um, You know if they come out with new game modes, that'd be cool I definitely will try it out especially if they like plan to push it for ranked or anything But uh, yeah, I think like for me I think as a MOBA player a traditional like three lane map would be really cool to see Cameron asked how would you change Zapdos or would you with it being such a game changer in the last two minutes of the game I feel like double points should maybe only count at the base goal and Zap should still work as a global Rotom Making those huge leads you can have early game and mid game stick a little more and feel rewarding instead of losing a team fight at Zapdos And just being completely dunked into oblivion just a thought could be shit though <laughs> Would love to hear your thoughts also love the streaming content much love from Australia So shout out to Australia and uh, Cameron for asking the question um you know, originally my opinion was for sure that Zapdos was overpowered, and I do think that Zapdos is a bit of a heavy swing, uh, but it has to be. So I don't want them to change Zapdos too much, and I'm not exactly sure what the best change is. I think, if anything, now my opinion used to be like nerf Zapdos down to doing like less point swing potential, and now I kind of want it to stay the same, but I want there to be more point of potential in the mid game. The the fear of that though is that like when one team is winning early in mid game, they kind of just take everything. And so like if we were to put like more points on Rotom or Dreadnought, because that was originally half of my idea in the beginning, 
um, I would be worried that the team that's ahead would just get more points on top of that. So I kind of feel like Zapdos works the, the exact way that it needs to work, where if a team is behind, you just kind of hard farm your side and then you try to win the team fight. Now, does it suck if you're the team that was ahead the whole time and then you lose the Zapdos and lose the game? Yeah, but that's part of the game. Like You have to be able to win that last fight. And in a 10-minute MOBA, I think it's just incredibly hard um, for there to be like a fair mechanic in play if the team just like if one team just gets ahead and then stays ahead and then closes out the game and if that was like the normal way that the game would happen um, instead of it kind of being like a potential chance for the other team to win then I think it would be really tough so they could maybe nerf it down like I'm still not a fan of auto dunking I think it's stupid uh, so maybe they could just make Zapdos where it's like the last two minutes is still double points and Zapdos just makes you have a much faster dunking speed so like double the dunking speed um, but they would still have to yeah I don't know I it, maybe it just gives too many points on top of that like I, I don't know maybe they could find a way to cut the points down a little bit but the point swing still needs to be relevant but then the team that gives Zapdos has to earn it right you can't just go run in and auto dunk you have to still kind of fight your way and still kind of get those dunks off so uh, maybe that would be a decent solution next question is from Andrew and he says how does streaming and making content affect your mental health I know you said you struggle with mental health issues and I'm hoping that it positively impacts you I do my best to be supportive of whether it be through watching your videos and streams and really help me out with learning the game and being entertaining I also enjoy your openness and insight you give on life is there anything else we can do as a fan base to support you more um, so I'm gonna start with that bottom part is there anything we can do as a fan base to support you more um, really honestly it's just like participation right like as long as I'm putting out content and streaming and, you know, as long as the perception of it from, you know, all of you as the viewers or the subscribers think that it's good, then just show up. R truthfully, the easiest and the, the freest way of supporting is to watch the videos with 100% watch time. That really helps with algorithm. Um, commenting, liking the video, all of those things are really, really important in terms of like how the actual website of YouTube works. Um, you know, I do have channel memberships and people do donate whenever I'm streaming, but I, I'll never like push that too hard because it's just, it's financial. And, you know, at the end of the day, like there are free ways to support, uh, but other things like simple other things too, like being in the discord and, uh, being a part of the community, which gives this, this whole experience a much more full feeling, uh, following me on Twitter and interacting with my tweets and, you know, like having like a little dialogue back and forth, like all of that kind of stuff is, is really, really beneficial to kind of like filling out the whole experience of being a content creator. Um, as for how making content affects my mental health, I think that it's it's overall positive and usually is overall positive. The the issue that we fall into as content creators, I think, is getting obsessed with the numbers. It's, it's absolutely got to be true for every content creator. I would not believe anybody if they didn't say that they weren't obsessed with the numbers. Um, and that's a good and a bad thing. Like, I get super, super excited when things are going well, and I get super stressed out when things are going uh, poorly. Like, if a video underperforms or if I'm not seeing a lot of growth and stuff like that. Uh, that's kind of part of the territory for me, though. I don't really think that it's, like, a super big issue. Um, more often than not, I find being in front of like a, a lot of people, uh, that the majority of people are very kind, but there are also a lot of mean people like, you know, just the other day, someone told me, like someone commented and said that I was, you know, um, trying to be Snorlax IRL, which I assume is like a fat joke, you know, but whatever, it's not that big a deal. Um, again, something that kind of comes with the territory and, uh, the nine times out of 10 doesn't really bother me, but every now and then kind of gets under your skin when people just want to be like malicious or rude. But um, like I said, it's not so bad. And uh, any any form of support in terms of just showing up, dropping a comment uh, for this Q&A and being around for videos and streams is really, really helpful. All right, False said, what Pokemon would you like to see get added to Unite? The game can feature weird and unexpected Pokemon like Crustle and Cramorant, if they also don't forget about the famous Pokemon of the franchise like Pikachu and Charizard. You can also pick out which role of the five existing ones they would fall into. Yeah. Um, so I do this a lot. There's some really standout ones that I would like to see. I think the the most important one for me, because it's just like how I experienced Pokemon and how I loved um, the, you know, the intellectual property when I was a kid watching it or when I was much younger watching it uh, would be Mewtwo. Like I, I, I feel like you have to have Mewtwo in this game. Uh, for me, I think that he, he fits the all rounder role. But for some reason, I have this, like, he's always got, like, a, a really, like, strong ability sense to me. So I would love to see him be, like, an SP all-rounder. I think that could be really cool where he's, like, 
more of like a bruiser and he's like tankier ish but he's more so spitting out his abilities a lot more and and kind of doing damage almost like a almost like a gengar but not speedster burst damage but more like intermittent damage a little bit of cc i think that could be really really cool uh, other characters i would love to see scyther as a speedster onyx as a defender Entei as an all-rounder um, there was another one that I've been talking about, uh, every now and then Mew, oh, Mew as a support. I think Mew as a support would be sick. Um, so all kinds of stuff like that. Like, um, I think that'd be really, really cool. And then I want to see like some silly picks too. Like, I think like Psyduck and Golduck could be something cool. You know what I mean? They could definitely do something like that for sure. Uh, I think that those would be really, really fun. Uh, Brophy said, what's the thing that kept you moving uh, towards content creation, game after game? You put in the time. What's the what's the driving factor? Is there a specific dream, or are you just in love with content creation? Because I've seen the work, brother, and your tweets, and the numbers I respect the grind, so genuinely curious. Keep pushing, bro. Love your content. Happy to see you grinding. Thank you so much, first and foremost. Um, when I was much, much younger, I, I kind of like got into content creation in the gaming world, as the gaming world was getting into content creation, there weren't that many people making YouTube videos of gaming and the hardware to even make YouTube videos for gaming didn't even exist in a gaming market. Like the whole, like for example, Elgato as a company, they make gaming, like they make gaming and streaming and kind of peripherals and things, but that company didn't exist back then. Like there was no gaming focused content creator focused products on the market. There were just recording devices for things. Um, one of the first recording devices I ever got was called a Dazzle DVC 170. And it was like, it was a recording device that was a USB on one end. And then it had like the old school, like component cables, like the red, the yellow and the white. And you would plug in a console to that. And, and you had to have like these weird splitter cables to be able to have the console on your computer or your monitor or your TV and on the, the Dazzle, Dazzle recording device. So anyways, my point being is that I just, I, I, I grew up with this. I, I was watching other people start to make videos and I wanted to do it too. And then all throughout my life, you know, since I was probably about, I don't know, 15, 16 years old, I wanted to do that. I, I saw um, making videos as a really fun thing. And then streaming started because that kind of started after people were making videos. So people started streaming and I thought that was super cool. And I've been following streamers and content creators for so long. And I watched, I kind of watched the internet grow and YouTube grow to what it is today. And I always felt like I was on the outside looking in and I wanted to, to join that. Um, now there is a specific dream and a driving factor. Um, you know, as I was super excited about content creation when I was much younger and was really into it, there was still this like, this this sense of like, I, I see that this could be used to connect with people. You know, I would have a lot of hard times in my life, you know, dealing with depression and different things like that, and. I, you know, the thing that, that excited me was esports and gaming and competitive gaming and, and, and videos and, you know, content and stuff like that. And I, I always kind of, I guess in a way, use that as a way to, to deal with some of my issues. And that was a good thing for me. You know, it was a really good thing for me. So if I could give that back to people, if I could make good content and help them through hard times, then that's what I really want. That's the dream. The dream is connecting with people and, hopefully in a sense because this is how i feel like it happened for me is to save people so that's really what i'm chasing after cody asked how do you fix the attackers pushing speedsters completely out of the meta problem yeah this is an annoying one i think that the way that you fix this is by either just finding some kind of way to make attackers way less viable in jungle um, the easy solution for me is to truly just make it to where attackers can't jungle, and I could talk about the actual solution, like how you do that, um, but but ultimately we just need to make them much less viable in jungle, so that way it makes more sense that you could take either which one. Um, that's really what it is. I mean, that said, we could also make like speedsters and all-rounders better in lane. That could definitely help out a little bit, uh, but I really think it's just going to be like, yeah, attackers just kind of need to come out of jungle a little bit, at least a little bit, so that way um, all-rounders and speedsters can kind of have their own place. Joe asked one uh, I would like to see special rewards for players at the top of Masters League I oh, would would like to see special rewards for players at the top of Masters League I think the top 10 mains of X Pokemon would get shiny skins what do you think about it and two I would like to see solo duo queue for only ranked what's your opinion about it definitely want to see solo duo queue only for ranked um, not a huge fan of ranked being like this team queue mixed with um, basically just this hodgepodge queue but 
Um, I think that that would make the game better if there was at least split queues or if like the higher ranks were solo duo queue only. I think that like uh, special rewards for like the top of ranks is always a good idea. I'm not exactly sure if I think that like the shiny skins should be the reward because there's going to be a lot of people that want the shiny skin. So they would maybe have to do like something different. Like they could do seasonal rewards, right? Like they could have, um, you know, a very specific skin for one character or something like that, or for one Pokemon, and if you hit the highest rank, you get that one, and then that season ends, and that skin goes away. So you, you want those kind of rewards to be really prestigious, and to feel like, wow, man, you got that in season one, that's so cool. Um, that would be really cool to me. But I, I don't think it can be the shiny skin, because there's going to be a lot of people that want that, and locking them out of that is probably not the best idea. <laughs> All right, Awolf said, do you think they should replace standard matches with something different or unique? Do you think the game should be longer, given the communication um challenges so teams have more time to learn each other's play style why is the guy sitting behind you not playing and making pokemon unite content he seems so cool or sees how cool you're doing it um yeah i know my roommate billy just isn't isn't a content creator um but he does like playing other games with friends and stuff um i i don't know um i don't think that the game should be longer per se that it, it could be like 15 minutes but i think that I'm, I'm mostly comfortable with it i really just think people need to learn the game a little bit better the game's still young i mean more or less it's like a little over a month old and uh standard matches with something different or unique could be cool like i think anytime they add like new game modes or could find a way to add new content could be cool but i think that the game is mostly like gameplay wise the game is mostly pretty darn good like i really don't have a lot of complaints once i'm in a match and once the match ends to be honest Terrible Plaz says, what character is best for Zapdos stealing? Looking for a setup that will allow consistent Zapdos steals. Honestly, Lucario is really, really good for it with Powered Up Punch. But even then, he may not be the best just because, you know, the Powered Up Punch has to hit it. So he has to position really well, but he's also melee. So people can kind of shove him out. Um, really, really good ones for stealing, though. I think Cinderace and Greninja are insanely strong at stealing. Even like someone like Snorlax is really, really good at stealing, potentially. But uh, some of those characters, I think, would be uh, some of the best for Zapdos stealing. Hector said, how does a first person find a team where we begin to play United at the top level to become a pro player? Also, how do you think competitive scene will grow? Do you think it's promising or being big or just decent small tourneys here and there? For now, I think definitely just decent small tourneys here and there. It's it's just way too young. If anything, uh, tournament organizers or even like Timmy Studios are just looking at the interest that players have for competitive, and it's definitely there. As for how to, to begin with uh, competitive um like finding a team and stuff like that you really just gotta gotta meet people like there's a few discords you can get in try like looking for group channels um i couldn't even name them all really they're, they're just kind of like they're just kind of widespread all over the place but like the reddit discord there's a discord called unite stadium um floatstone discord like there's there's a bunch of discords that definitely have like a more competitive focused style of people a group of people in there and you really just got to start meeting people and playing with people and then if it's if y'all feel like you're consistently doing well when you play then you start signing up for whatever little tournaments pop up here and there and then you just kind of work on improving over and over and over time so uh, that's really what teams have already started to do they really just pick their teams um, much earlier on and then they started playing tournaments the Knight said, how is life treating you? Are you doing okay? You plan to basically be a Pokemon Unite channel for the time being? Or are you going to do more variety channel? Definitely going to be a Pokemon Unite channel, at least on this channel. Uh, not to say that I wouldn't do other videos or other games in some kind of a way. Because uh, I definitely could on like a second channel or something. But definitely going to focus on that right now. Life treating me pretty good. Um, I'm doing okay it's honestly life has been pretty hard for like the last handful of years but lately things have been getting a lot lot better um, my mental health's been getting better um you know been struggling with like work and finances and stuff but that you know as long as youtube stuff keeps going in, in the right direction like that's getting better um i'm very optimistic i'm very excited to just keep working hard and ultimately i think that things are going pretty well if i saw said do you expect this game to ever have a huge spike in players and if so and if so then why um i think that we have a pretty great play player base right now obviously you can't really tell but the game doesn't seem like it's struggling to have players and and you know we have one month until the mobile release so that'll definitely be a nice little spike of players um so that that i guess is my answer <laughs> meta said how should supporters catch up in xp when the team is behind in levels before zapdos they can't kill mobs fast enough really you just follow one of your teammates and tag the mobs that they fight um yeah you really can't farm on your own nor should you because it would just be slow so yeah just stick with the teammate and farm up get what you can and um yeah be ready for the end game lazy turtle said if you could pick four other people besides yourself to form a team and compete in tournaments who would it be and why so i would definitely go with a content team right um i'd have to pick like peak spraggles teeds myself peak spraggles teeds myself and 
I don't know, maybe like a drive or something, you know, I don't know. I would have to go with a, a cool content team to, to try to make some waves and we would definitely lose a tournament, but it would be really fun and, and could make some good videos or something out of it. Cheese gamer said, um, have you heard of any life advice that's stuck with you? If not, do you have any of your own? Thanks, Crashy. You're pretty much the only content creator I watch at the moment. Um, some life advice that has stuck with me. I don't know. Just in general, I think the the sentiment of like, like not letting, not like living your life with regrets, like like trying to live and chase after dreams and stuff. Like, which obviously in my position now makes a lot of sense, right? Cause like things are going well with YouTube stuff, but honestly for years and years and years, I've been chasing this dream with no results, no hope at all. Um, but I just think that the, the general sentiment of trying to, uh, at least if it's on the side, like try to fulfill what's in your heart, like try to not live with regrets. Don't leave things unsaid with other people. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I definitely wish that I could have said things to people before, the opportunity had passed and just things like that. Like in general, don't live with regret. Um, make sure that you, you give things your all. Um, if, if there's something you truly care about, a person you truly care about, make sure they know it and make sure you work hard at, at that. So Alexander asked, how would you approach fixing the rank system? Um, really? I think the rank system just has a little bit too much fluff fluffiness in it. I've kind of talked about that recently. Uh, performance points kind of allowing people to lose games and also like bumping them up in rank. It's just like, it's just a little disingenuous to the goal of like whether or not like you're winning, you go up. And if you're losing, you go down kind of a system and then bot matches. Like there's no place for bot matches in rank. So I think tightening the matchmaking, getting rid of bot matches and either lessening the, the effect of performance points. Cause the, the goal of performance points is cool, right? Like if you're doing well, it kind of like helps you out individually. The goal is cool, but it's, it's got a pretty profound effect. I think where, um, you know, it's like sponging losses entirely. I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. You could either get rid of performance points or, um, just like lessen the effect of it or make it harder to get performance points. So it's not, it doesn't happen so often where performance points impacts your rank. Um, but honestly, performance points is probably less of the issue. I think tightening the matchmaking and getting rid of bot games is, is probably much better. And you could add like one or two more ranks. So that way it kind of spreads people out a little bit more. So if you added like one or two more ranks to the rank system and you tighten the matchmaking, that would make games a little bit more accurate in terms of skill. Uh, Azen says, how has your channel been for you? Have you enjoyed making videos and streaming for your channel? Also hope you're doing well. Just in case pronunciation is Aizen. Ah, so there you go. Aizen. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, the channel has been great. I, I it could way farther than my expectations could never have expected this to be what's going on in my life. I love making videos. It's not even a chore to me. I, I spend a lot of time doing it. Like I literally spend a lot of time doing it, but I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm doing well. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm getting healthy and, uh, yeah, life is kind of on the up and up for me. So thank you all so much for that. I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Game Zone said, how do you feel about the night meta at the moment? I think that's a, it's mostly okay. A lot of characters are decently viable. Uh, the only thing about the meta that sucks is the jungle meta. I think the jungle meta really tightens the um, the the pool of junglers, which sucks. But honestly, everything else is great. Like supports are great. Tanks are pretty good. Obviously, Snorlax is a little overpowered still. Uh, but tanks are mostly pretty good. Like Slowbro and Crustle are still pretty good. Um, a lot of attackers are viable. And the only thing that kind of sucks is the jungle meta. So if they could kind of tweak the jungle meta a little bit, um, pretty good, pretty good stuff. Rob asked if Pokemon were real and you could have any starter from any gen slash game, who would you pick? I think I got to I got to keep it true. I've only ever played Pokemon red and I grew up as a Pokemon boomer. So it's got to be gen one and it's got to be Charmander. Uh, no lie. There's, there's no other option there. Uh, Reggie Tomb said, thoughts on new legendary Pokemon to be in the middle and what should it do? I think that it'd be cool if they could put new legendary Pokemon in the middle. And um, even if it was the exact same map and maybe like halfway through the game, like at the five minute mark, it'll give us, you know how it gives you the warnings where it's like, we're struggling. What if it gave you a warning to let you know what, exactly what end game boss that game had? Or when you started the game, it told you uh, what your end game boss would be. And then you had to change your strategy a little bit based around whatever that end game boss would be. So let's say it was like multiple and Articuno. Um, it could be really cool if like in some games you get Zapdos and you know what that does, but in other games you're going to get Articuno. Um, that, that's a little bit more on the like casual fun end of things because realistically consistency in a competitive game is probably a little bit better so you know exactly what you're getting into every game. But if they told you at the beginning of the game and maybe it was like a, a more understood thing, that could be cool. 
But yeah, I don't know what it should do. I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I don't have an idea for that. Toyota said, what buffs do you get from killing uh, the bots like Ludicolo and others? Because I have no clue. So when you kill Rotom, you get some points and it pushes down the lane. When you kill Dreadnought, you get a shield and a bunch of experience. When you kill Ludicolo, you get the like the blue buff, which makes you do additional damage to wild Pokemon when they're on low health. So that's really like the jungle clear buff. And when you have the Bufalant, the red buff, it makes your attacks apply a movement speed slow on hit. So whenever you attack somebody else, like a, an opposing player, it will slow their movement speed. All right, Aniv said, do you think this game has enough carry potential? I mean, it is a team game. I think that there is a decent amount of carry potential. You can make some pretty big plays in this game. So can you really full solo carry a game? Not really, but also kind of. Like, you can get really fed, and you can have a really strong performance and, and do pretty well. So I'd say it's pretty good. It's, it's probably the best that you could expect from a team game because there are a lot of team games that I've played where there is zero carry potential, and I definitely don't think it's that way in this game. Uh, Pokemon Unite Guide said, do you think Unite will be a substantial source of content for at least the next year i think we've got a good few years out of this game it really is hard to say this early on but it's going to come down to timmy studios and how they continue to develop the game you know as long as they keep pushing out updates and um dropping content on us new pokemon uh maybe a new map like so we'll see what the what the end of the first season so going into september 22nd with their mobile release we should be moving into like the second season and like a new battle pass maybe so we'll see it, it really comes down to how they handle this game uh live games as a service like this where it's just this free-to-play experience it, it lives and dies by the content and by the updating of the game so we'll see what they do but i think that we i think that they could easily make this game go for a good few years minimum really um yeah that it would be unfortunate if they couldn't do that uh, rambo said what's your hardest challenge or obstacle you had to face as a young adult do you sometimes sulk or regret the decisions you made leading up to it? Or do you think back sometimes and say, wow, I experienced this. It taught me a life lesson and now look where I am. Um, not necessarily as a young adult per se. I mean, I was around like 24, 25. Um, but me and my ex, when we were together, we were together for a long time. Uh, we, we split up and it was a really awful situation. Um, so definitely the hardest challenge I've ever had to, to go through was that breakup. And I definitely have plenty of regrets from the relationship. I have plenty of regrets on how the breakup was handled. Um, but I did learn a lot about myself, about <laughs> the other person, about what I really want and who I really want to be. And I don't know, the life lesson that I got out of that is um, good and bad and painful even to this day. But it was for sure the, the hardest obstacle and challenge I've ever had to face was having someone in my life for so long and then realizing that they didn't want to be anymore and having to learn to live with the realization that, um, you know, we as human beings experience loss. Like it's, it's just part of the, the human experience. We will experience loss. Um, people will come and go through our lives. They will, you know, unfortunately pass away. Um, but having to learn to live with knowing that someone that I cared so deeply about chose to leave my life was very, very hard for me. And, and even now thinking about it, like I'm, it's, it's not so bad now, but even thinking about it, knowing that this person is out there and that they just don't want to be a part of my life is, is still kind of hard to accept, but, um, you know, it's a part of life and we are a resilient species. Human beings are extremely resilient and we, learn to live with things we learn to to grow and to to move on so mystic ninja said what was the first game you ever did commentating on in a tournament it was probably gears of war that's like the first serious competitive game i ever got into and i probably did like an online tournament for it or something and uh yeah it was kind of commentary for me it was always kind of like a joke and i just wanted to get into it and i thought it was kind of fun and then i kind of realized i was decent at it and yeah went from there i guess uh, Eric's journal said what characters are better early game late game or good both early and late game I would say the majority of the cast of characters or, or Pokemon in the game are good at both um, And there are some that are much much better at early game And then there are some that are much better at late game, but the majority are good at both uh, For example, Absol and Pikachu are insane early game, but they're pretty terrible anywhere else um, Gardevoir not very good early game at all But really really good late game and like the other majority of Pokemon. I would say they're pretty good at both I'm, I'm trying to think of more specifically um 
but yeah like i guess i guess like uh all rounders kind of in general early game are not the strongest definitely ramp up in the mid game um but they're not terrible in early game especially if you put them in jungle because that's where they deserve to be um but yeah speedsters kind of in general as like a, a class they kind of taper off and aren't, aren't great in the end game minus like zero aura i think the talent flame's still pretty decent throughout all phases of the game um but yeah not zero aura level Zed said, what is the first game you played that you got into big time? Gears of War. Xbox 360 was in love with it. Went to my first uh, ever MLG event with it. And um, when I was like 13 years old, that was the first game I started making content for. I was I was a young kid, man, but I love that game. And I played that game and that game series for a really, really long time. I don't really interact with Gears of War these days, but man, what a time, dude. That game was so, so fun. Megaverse said, who's the best character in the game and why is it Mr. Mime? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, said, how does one start to even do YouTube in the first place? Is it hard to get recognition when you first start? It's, um, you basically go into it with zero expectation of getting recognition, and you do it because you have an enjoyment for doing it. Uh, the reality with how you start is you just start. You do need some level of hardware, right? Like some kind of recording software, editing software, or graphic design stuff, of which there is a lot of that that is free. Um, but you, you really just start. You just make something and you put it out there and you do your best. And I promise you, if you're really, really new to making content, it's going to suck. That's just the reality. But you keep doing it. And over time, you will get better and better and better. Um, there's a lot of just self-learning, self-taught experience with making content. And, you know, I don't feel like I did anything special, but over the years, and I mean, literally years worth of doing this, uh, I've gotten much, much better. I've learned, I've paid attention to how other people do things. And I've tried to find my own way and my own style. And yeah, that's what you do. But the, the biggest sentiment, the biggest answer in this question is that you just start. You have to just start. Don't overthink it. Don't wait for the right moment to start. Don't wait until you have the perfect setup or the perfect microphone or all the perfect software. Don't wait for anything. Just do it and start putting out things and start improving for yourself. And then you can start like worrying about whether or not um, you know the recognition is happening. Uh, your first video, your first hundred videos may never even be seen, um, but if you're posting good things and you're learning about how to make it better and you're learning about how to um, you know, do the content in a way that is watchable for others, then you'll get in uh, a much better position. You'll get better at it. Brother Seb says, how long do you think Unite will stay relevant? Also, have you ever played Rocket League? I have played Rocket League. I'm absolutely terrible at it. Definitely not a game that I like to play. And I think that Unite will be around for, like I said earlier, I think at least a few years. Um, this game has a really good opportunity to to continue to push out like characters and content and keep people interested in the game. And I hope that they do so. Runaway Player said, random question. Do you play any Pokemon games beside Pokemon Unite? I don't, man. I don't. I almost feel a little bit guilty about this. I think this is a good opportunity to kind of address that. Um, I don't feel like I'm like, a, I, it's weird. I'm, I'm obviously not lying about it, but I kind of feel like, like a sham sometimes. Like there's just so many like PokeTubers and other people that know so much about Pokemon that I don't know. Like I said, I, I mean, I grew up watching the show. I thought it was cool. Uh, I just never really stuck with it as I got older. But I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to go and watch more now. Um, but no, I don't. I don't really play other Pokemon games at all. Jay asks, "What were some of your favorite games from your childhood? Gears of War one, definitely an insanely good game. Um, as far as like." my other like my much lower childhood um any nintendo 64 game star fox 64 um, mario party mario kart some of these games that i played with like friends or with my sister uh super super fun mario party man mm, that game super super fun on nintendo 64 um back in the day i don't know i sound so old now crazy anthony said how or why did you pick out crashy as your youtube name i was uh, there was a couple of reasons but the main one was like I loved Crash Bandicoot on PlayStation 1, and I wanted like Crash to be my name, but I wanted it to also be unique, so I spelled it with a K, and then eventually, somewhere along the, the years of me being under the name Crash, I added a Y to it for some reason, um, so I went from Crash to Crashy at some point. 
Orbit said, is it a viable strat to use your own health bar to cover up the HP of a wild Pokemon? For example, to position yourself in a way that covers Zapdos remaining HP to prevent an enemy Greninja from being able to time his surf. I'm not familiar with MOBAs. Is this something being done in other games? And if not, why? I don't think that this is something that's done in other games, but I also think that this is kind of a unique issue to, to Unite. And now I kind of need to go and watch some footage of other games because you can definitely cover up health bars and it's super, super annoying. But I don't know if you can do it intentionally. You would kind of have to mess around with it like in a 1v1 um, to try to see if you can figure out how to position for it. And even then, like being in that position may not be the best position to be in in terms of like the context of the fight. So that could still be not the best play. But I have definitely had it where like people were like covering up Dreadnought's health bar and I'm like, I can't see this. Like or, or like covering up Zapdos health bar. And I'm like, I don't know when to use my ability and I just go for it and then either get it or I don't. So uh, I don't know if it's a super viable strategy, but it could be and in my opinion, I'm not a huge fan of that. So I hope that if that does become a thing, that they uh, can move the health bars around. Maybe they should do that anyways, to be honest. Uh, Justin said, what are things you like slash dislike Unite compared to League? Um, I definitely like that it's very simple. That's good for new players and for onboarding and getting people into the game. I, I like that the game is not an hour long at times, but I also wish that um it was a little bit longer and i also wish that there was maybe a, a traditional three lane map i mean not not that i i think that the game's not good because i do love it exactly the way it is um, but more so than anything i think i dislike how not good the ranked mode is compared to something like league potentially i don't really know much about league these days um, but i would say that the league ranking mode is much more prestigious and serious but i think that's to be expected like we are playing a switch moba that's Pokemon. I don't think it's going to ever be as prestigious or as great as League in terms of the MOBA world. Um, but, you know, just small things like that, I guess. Alex is cool said, what's your favorite Pokemon and will you play other uh, other games in the future? I'll definitely play some other games in the future. Don't have any plans for it now, so maybe I'd stream other games or maybe I would uh, post other games on like a second channel that I have. Uh, favorite Pokemon is definitely Charizard, for sure. <laughs> Gemstone said, what are you going to do to celebrate 10k subscribers? This video! <laughs> I wanted to throw that in there, so shout out to you, Gemstone. Um, Math Aina, Aina. <laughs> How do you make the stripes and toothpaste? How do they make the stripes and toothpaste? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me this. Uh, Dominic asks, why do you hate Absol so much? Because he because they're bad. Absol's so bad. He's so useless, man. Uh, Absol's bad. <laughs> Can't team fight. Hector said, do you have another job? I don't. This is my job now. I, I mean, it was kind of my job anyways, but it, I wasn't really making that much money off of it. Um, but for the last couple of years, I've been either in and out of jobs or trying to find a job and just like haven't been kind of lucky with life in that particular instance um so been really kind of struggling with um not having work and wanting to have work or uh, trying to do my own thing and now this is what i will for sure be pushing all of my time into so uh pretty crazy stuff thank you so much and then silenced kill said only fans win well unfortunately that will not be happening. So thank you guys so much for, for watching this video. I know it's really, really long. I knew it was going to be really long, um, but we, we did it. So um, friends, thank you so much. 10K subs is uh, just one part of this journey, and it's a huge part of it. I will continue. I literally refreshed just now, and I, you know last night I hit 10K, but now I'm at 10,200 subs. So I will literally continue. Thank you so much for being around. I will do my best. I will always try to be real with y'all and connect with you. I will always try to give you an experience and a place to feel like you can be yourself and to feel like you can connect with me because that's what I want. Uh, y'all do outnumber me, <laughs> so uh, you know, be patient with me. Um, but um, you know, I'm Joseph. I'm Crashy. I'm the person that I actually am, not just some social media figure. And I want y'all to, to know how much this means to me. So thank you so much. I am very, very humbled. And I just appreciate it. You're, you're literally helping me change my life. And uh, helping me get out of some of the struggles that I've had. And I couldn't be more grateful. So thank you so much. I definitely do appreciate it. Thank you for spending your time with me here on the channel. Be sure to be kind to one another. Tell someone that you love them. And I'll see you on the next video.